Hi guys and welcome to Simultaneous Linear Equations with More Than Two Variables. Who would have thought? Simultaneous equations, more than two variables, x, y's and z's, what does this all mean? Well if you stick with me, I will let you know. And it is, as always, just delightful to have you here. Thank you so much for taking the time dropping by. If it's the first time you have been here or you have not yet managed to do so, over there in the corner is a doohickey which asks you to subscribe. Basically, uh, it just lets me know that you are watching and I'm doing this for a reason. Um, a video is coming shortly about the humour of YouTube and trying to sort of uh, ask people to subscribe, but uh, I'll save that for a different day. Um, but now let's get down to the maths. And by the end of this lesson, as is normal, there's a red arrow somewhere above me here. Uh, that basically says about uh, hoping you'll have an understanding of how to use CAS and pencil and paper methods to find solutions to simultaneous equations with more than two variables. Now you're sitting there going, hold on a moment, it was hard enough with two variables. You gave me elimination and substitution and CAS and matrices and now graphing and you're telling me we can throw in another variable and I have to do it by pencil and paper? No, nope, not really, because basically uh, you can do it with the CAS. And in many cases, if you ever had an exam question or anything in a, an end of semester test or whatever else, that uh, I'm pretty sure you'd be able to use your calculator. Uh, Try to do this by pencil and paper is quite long. Uh, I mean, obviously, um, for difficult questions, it's very, very long. Um, so let's just go down to, let's look at what a, a sort of a simultaneous equation looks like with three unknowns. And ka there we go. Big arrow pointing to three unknowns. Now, normally we're used to having an X and a Y. And we know that equations that had something like 2x plus 3y equals 6 stood for a straight line. But what on earth does 2x plus y plus z equals minus 1 actually mean? Well, you may be way ahead of me and already know the answer to this, but I'm going to pause the suspense because it's coming later in the video. With visual representations, does it get any better than this? No. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire up my CAS and I'm going to input these equations. So, loading up my CAS calculator, and yes, I am using the Casio class pad. I am also a TI Inspire user, but for these videos, and because this is the calculator I'm using for school at this moment in time, then please bear with me. There will be TI Inspire videos coming at some point soon. And if you're wondering what I'm looking down at, yes, he's here being very, very needy. As normal, there he is. We haven't seen him for a while, have we? Ladies and gentlemen, Zero the puppy. He's not really a puppy now, he's about three years old, and he's like, show me some love. Now what I've just done is actually fed him, haven't I? I've given you some food, and I gave you a treat, and you're just sitting here going, what are you doing? You're talking to yourself. And I'm like, yes, I know I'm talking to myself, but I'm actually talking to all my subscribers. Now, will you do me a favor? Will you go and lie down for a short while while I finish this very exciting video? Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good boy. All right, we get lots of requests, strangely enough, for zero, and uh, I think he's going to be more famous than I am. But now, loading up my CAS calculator, I'm going to hit main, and then, as we can see here, I've got a previous example from a previous video. So I'm going to edit, clear all, and yes. And now, if you remember, I'm going to hit keyboard and this button. Now, in this situation, I'm not just going to hit it once, I'm going to hit it twice, which will set up those three equations for me. And I'll now enter the equations in, and then fast forward through, and I'll see you in just a moment. Okay, I've entered my three equations in, and the key point here is to remember that now you're going to solve it for three variables. So x, comma, y, comma, z. And the great thing is about the Casio class pad, those x, y, and z are part of my actual keyboard, which is awesome. Now we're going to hit enter, piff, puff, poof, and out comes those amazing values of x equals 1, y equals negative 5, and z equals 2. So using the CAS calculator, awesome. There is a solution. Now, what that suggests is whatever these things are, these x, y, and z's are, they actually meet the three of them at one point. Now, that one point has a three-dimensional coordinate space because it's got an x value, a y value, and a z value. But if you go back to a previous video with simultaneous equations, remember, for lines, we had the situation where they crossed once, they were parallel and never met, or they were the same line. Let's think about whether that could be possible for this three-dimensional thing. All right, so there's my CAS calculator done. Now I'm going to show you how to do it using pencil and paper. And the trick to be able to do this is realize, well, we're going to turn three into two. Now, sadly, the Spice Girls didn't release the song three into two. And I don't want to think about whether I'm not going to even search YouTube to find what will come up. It will probably terrify me. So the point of it is, what I'm going to try and do is I've got three unknowns. I'm going to try and reduce those three equations to just two equations 
with two unknowns. And this is the way I'm going to do it. So the first thing I've got, 2x plus y plus z is equal to negative 1. So that's equation number 1. And I'm going to subtract from that, or rather I'm going to write underneath it, 6x plus z is equal to 8. I'm going to draw a line. Now the reason I've written those two equations, and a part of this is trial and error, I'm sure there are ways of being able to sort of suss this out, but I saw that both of those had z's in them, and I know that I can eliminate those z's by, in this situation, subtracting them. Why is it subtracting? Well, because a plus and a plus in front of those z's would normally be a plus. And in this stage, in this stage only, it becomes a minus. So, subtracting those, 2x minus 6x gives me 4, uh, sorry, negative 4x. y minus nothing gives me plus y. z minus z, they disappear, which is good. And minus 1 minus 8 gives me negative 9. Now I can write that in a slightly different way. I can write that as 4x minus y is equal to 9. So what I've got now is got one equation with two unknowns. What am I going to do now? The same thing, but with the other equation. So I've got 2x plus y plus z is equal to negative 1. This time I'm going to use 3y plus 4z equals negative 7. Now the problem with that is, is that I can't eliminate because they're not the same. So what do I need to do? Well, I'm actually going to multiply that one by 4. Now, the, the trick to this here is I've got to eliminate the z's. Why? Well, this equation here is in terms of x and y. So I need to have another equation in terms of x and y. The best way to do that? Eliminate the z's. So rewriting these equations gives me 8x plus 4y plus 4z is negative 4. And then this one stays as 3y plus 4z equals negative 7. Draw a line, and what am I trying to eliminate? The 4z's, they both have a positive in front of them. A positive and a positive would normally be a positive, and so I'm going to subtract the two of them to eliminate them. So 8x minus 0 gives me 8x. 4y minus 3y gives me plus y. A minus 4 minus minus 7 is going to give me the great value of 3, which I'm going to write as a 3. And what do we notice now? I have two equations, two unknowns. What do I do? Simultaneous equations. So, writing them out again over here, I get 4x minus y is equal to 9, and I get 8x plus y is equal to 3. A minus and a plus, the y's are the thing I'm going to try and eliminate. A minus and a plus would normally be a minus, so I'm going to add these two together, which gives me 12x is equal to 12, and so x is equal to 1. Now, a uh, word of advice. When you're doing this in your working out, being an exam situation or whatever, or even in your workbook, you want to come down the page. I can't because I'm limited by screen real estate and there's something I'm trying to hide at the bottom of my screen so I can't go a little bit higher. I've got my x value as 1. Am I finished? No. I need now to find my y value and my z value. How do I find my y value? Well, I suppose I'm going to use one of my equations here. Or alternatively, go straight back to my original. And probably makes more sense to go back to the original so that I don't make a mistake. I may have made a calculation error. So let's go back to this 6x plus z is equal to 8. Now you're going to turn around and say, but hold on a moment. A moment ago, you said find the y value. Hey, I've changed my mind. I'm going to find the z value. It's easier. So 6x is a 6 plus z is 8. So z is equal to 2, which pretty much corresponds, I believe, with what we got before. Yep. And so what we're going to do now is find my y value. How am I going to do that? Well, I can say that 2x plus y plus z is negative 1. 2x is a 2. y we don't know. z we know is 2 is equal to negative 1. I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides which gives me negative 5. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, I have just solved a simultaneous equation in three unknowns, or three variables. Uh, if you are not rounding applauding, uh, then really you are just a tough nut to crack. So I'll do a small bow. <laughs> As I say, are you going to be expected to do that in an exam? Highly unlikely. I mean, that didn't actually take that long, that particular example. Um, if it was more complicated, it would probably require a lot, lot more working. But it's not... Uh, a difficult skill to practice or to be able to do. Now, I said to you at the start, what on earth is 2x plus y plus z equals minus 1? Well, loading up my GeoGebra, which is a free online piece of software, I uh, actually put that in. And what came out was this thing here, which is a plane. So when we have two dimensions, we had the x and the y, it was a straight line, it was a two dimensional thing. When we have a plane, it's a three dimensional thing because we're looking at now. 
um, objects in both in three dimensions and 2x plus y plus z equals minus one is actually the equation of a plane. Now the interesting thing is there that please don't think that that is to some extent. Don't think it's just that wide. It isn't. Again, that blue or purple line, we can argue on the color, um, it extends to infinity and beyond in two different ways or three different ways, I suppose, in that situation. So it's a plane. You're going to ask what's this gray line or this gray uh, plane. That's the one that's going through the X and Z axes, I believe. Um, it's a very small. Um, OK, so there we go. So that's a plane. So when we are solving, you know, these three uh, coordinates or these three equations together, what we're actually trying to find is we're trying to find out where three planes meet. Now, I suppose um, the easiest example is look at the classroom you're in at the moment or look at the room you're in at the moment. Now, while I'm not able at this moment to show you where I'm currently sitting, I can see one, two, three and four corners. And those corners of the room are where three planes meet. So the first one is my roof, then I've got a wall, and then I've got another wall. So if you look around you, unless you're in a circular classroom, and then in which case you're fairly stuffed, um, three planes can meet in a point. But that's actually not the only places that three planes can meet. Now this diagram has been borrowed or extracted from the Cambridge Essentials textbook series, which is what I'm teaching my lessons from. And it is a fairly brilliant diagram. Zooming in a little bit behind me, what we can see is that actually there are all sorts of ways that three planes can actually meet. The first one, as it says in diagram one, is they intersect at a point. That's what we've just had. Diagram two, they intersect in a line. So it might well be that actually, as you can see there, all three planes intersect at a line or there may be no intersection. Diagram four, I think, is freaking awesome because, yes, you may have two parallel planes and one that goes through it, in which case there's no common intersection. And diagram five, there's no intersection at all between any of them. So there are five different cases that can happen. Maybe there are more, but there are five in the Cambridge Essentials textbook. To be able to test for those is going to be fairly challenging. You just need to know about their existence. Um, but I suppose one of the things we do need to remember is about this parameters. And we dealt with parameters way, way back in the video on just ordinary uh, simultaneous equations. And what was a parameter? Well, a parameter was effectively a way of finding all points on a line. Now, going back to this example here, if you look at diagram two, where there's an intersection of the line, there would be infinite points where these would cross. Yes, because they all cross in that one line, very much when we had simultaneous equations and they were the same. They had an infinite number of intersections. We can use our CAS to help solve these. And as I've said before, doing this isn't particularly difficult. Interpreting what the calculator tells you, maybe that's a little bit more difficult. So loading up my CAS. I'm going to clear the screen so that we get rid of all the uh, previous detritus. And that's a great word if you don't use it. Hit that three times. Now, once again, I'm going to enter my three equations and then fade back in so that you can meet me in a moment. And in no time at all for you, but quite a long time for me because uh, my calculator crashed. Lol. Um, there are my three equations in. I need to tell it to solve for x, comma, y, comma, z. And I'm going to hit enter and biff, bop, poof. Outcomes, well, that's interesting. What does that mean? Well, I suppose the first thing you'll notice is that, that z equals z is the key here to using a parameter. Now, what that basically says is you are going to, for all of your coordinates here, choose the value of z. You can choose any value of z you like. That's effectively what this parameter is. So getting rid of that screen, I've got my calculation on my calculator as saying x is equal to minus 13z plus 43. I've got y is given by 5z minus 15, and I've got z equals z. And again, all that's saying to you is, you choose the value of z and plonk it in that equation for x and y, and you'll get every single point that you need. Right, so we don't do that in terms of an exam where you see z equals z or y equals y or x equals x, whichever it, it turns out to be, just replace it with a lambda. If you're on the TI Inspire, I think it might come up with C1 or C2 or C3. Again, that's just code for saying use that as the parameter. So therefore, I would now know that all the coordinates on my line here, undoubtedly, or my plane or whatever that meet would give me that my x value would be given by minus 13 lambda plus 43. My y coordinate would be given by 5 lambda minus 15. 
and my z coordinate would be given by lambda. And so again, if I was to choose lambda is equal to zero, then that would give me my coordinate would be 43 comma negative 15 comma zero. Put lambda in as one and you get negative 13 plus 43, which is 30. Uh, five times one minus 15 is negative 10 and one. And I can guarantee you that those points will lie on the solution set for those three simultaneous equations. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was it. Um, a swift gallop, but pretty much all you need to know. Thank you so much once again for watching. Now, I ask this at the end of every lesson. If you haven't already done so, can you please do me a favor and subscribe? There's a doohickey coming up for you there to click. Otherwise, look, um, thanks very much. Can you maybe send the word out to your friends, Instagram, Snapchat, and let them know we're around. I'm a small person trying to do a big job. Thank you so much for watching. There's a video over there loading for you as well. Have a good day. This is Mass Guru signing out. Bye-bye.